Welcome to Tech Resources Dame. In this video, we are going to learn how to read data from Azure Blob Storage or Data Lake Gen 2 to the on premises or destinations such as SQL, flat file uh, in SSIS package by using flexible file source. Um, so flexible file source is very uh, powerful uh, and is uh, kind of new to me as well and uh, where uh, in cases that uh, we need to read the data from our Azure Blob Storage or from a Data Lake Gen 2 and then uh, we can write to different destinations uh, in uh, on our on premises such as SQL or Oracle maybe create an Excel file or maybe CSV file. So we will learn how to download the Azure feature pack for SSIS. Why? Because this flexible file source is a part of Azure feature pack. Also, we'll learn how to create the blob storage, upload the file there, and then we will learn how to create an SSIS package to read that file and load the data to the our on-premises SQL server. So let's start with the Azure blob storage first. Here uh, I am on my Azure portal and uh, what I want to do, I want to create a storage account uh, where my file will exist. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, create this uh, storage account. Select your subscription and the resource group uh, and then uh, you will provide the name. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this to the tech storage uh, name. Uh, here we are all good. Uh, create your blob storage. And you could have created uh, uh, Azure uh, Data Lake Gen 2 storage as well if you wanted. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to go with the Azure Blob storage. Uh, the same process is same, you know, it's not a big difference. So we are going to just uh, uh, use Blob storage here, but uh, you can use uh, your source as the Data Lake Gen 2 as well. Our Azure Blob Storage is ready. Now we are going to go to containers and here think about that a folder or container input is needed. Now we create the input container and we are going to load or upload our file from my local system. So maybe this file is coming on a daily basis from some other place for you. But in my case, I'm just going to load manually for now so I can show you. Here is my file loaded. It's called the total sale. Now, our process that we need to create is SSIS package that need to read this file and load to our table. See, this is a total sale file. I'm going to show you some columns and data here. And you can see that ID, sale person, first name, last name, product name, and all those columns. Now, what I'm going to do here on my uh, on premises SQL, I have this database called Tech Brothers, and there is a table called the total sale. That's uh, the same definition of a file. So it has all those columns. If I will show you the definition of this table, I'm going to just go ahead and show you right here. That's the definition. So I have ID, sale person, first name, last name. And I choose the right data types, what I needed, like work card here, integer for sold items, float for uh, sold price and all. Now I have created this table with this definition. I will put in description as well. And also I will put the total sale file in the a description so you can use it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, truncate this table because we'll be reading the data from our blob storage uh, and then loading to this table. So let's uh, truncate and now we don't have any data in this table. Uh, that's great. So first of all if you will open your uh, uh, SSIS uh, project uh, so you go to Visual Studio and then you're going to go to the new and here you will go to the project uh, and you will create your uh, integration services project. Uh, if you are creating your integration services project uh, first time uh, and uh, here you are going to see Azure and it will be grayed out. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, Visual Studio 2017 and 2019. Uh, so you're going to see this uh, Azure uh, tab as uh, grayed out and there would be no tasks uh, such as these ones you are seeing right there. If you go to data flow, you are seeing uh, these uh, also different tasks, uh, sorry, uh, transformations uh, under Azure here. Uh, you are not going to see these as well, uh, but you will see this uh, grayed out. Uh, to bring all these uh, sources and destinations and tasks uh, to the our uh, Visual Studio, what we need to do, we need to download uh, Azure Feature Pack. So that's the link I'm going to put right there in the description. And then you're going to download according to your environment. In my case, I'm going to go for SQL Server 2019. I click right there. And then I download. Once I download, I have two files presented. Here's a 64-bit and then a 32-bit. My operating system is a 64-bit and I am going to download this one. So I will click next and it will download this file for me. 
So this file, then I'm going to go right click here and install. And once I install it, it's going to uh, bring these uh, all these tasks here. And uh, in the data flow, it's going to bring uh, those uh, sources and destination to me. Now, um, if you install it and still you don't see it, uh, close your uh, entire Visual Studio and reopen. And then it will uh, bring all these uh, file sources and destination and tasks for you automatically. And uh, that should be it. Once you have these, uh, then we can use these. Uh, now, we already have a video on how to use flexible flat uh, file task and some other from here. But in this case, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to use a data flow first uh, and we are going to use a flexible file source. So as I need to read the data, so I'm going to bring a data flow here. And uh, then inside the data flow, I'm, you can double click here. And here uh, you are going to go to the Azure. And in the Azure, you are going to go flexible file source. So, so in the flexible file source, uh, we are going to double click and then uh, it's going to ask you uh, file connection type. Uh, it's Azure Blob. Now you're going to click on new and uh, here we will be providing some information of our Blob storage. So see right there, it is asking you select your service. So Blob storage, Blob storage emulated and data lake storage too. In our case, it's Blob storage. We are going to provide the account name. So let's go back here. And uh, if you remember, we created uh, this uh, storage called Tech Resources Storage. Uh, that's our storage name. I'm going to copy and come back to my Visual Studio. And here I will provide that. Uh, OK, next uh, authentication. Uh, you can use the uh, access key. You can use service principle, or you can use shared access signatures. Uh, I'm going to go with access key. So I'm going to show you how to get that. Uh, go to the blob storage here. And then uh, you're going to go all the way to the access keys. Uh, once you are there, show keys and then uh, rotate keys and all that are there. But you're not going to do anything else. Uh, just uh, hit, uh, click on uh, show keys. And then here you will copy to the um, clipboard uh, this key. Go back to your uh, uh, Visual Studio and paste that key. Here you're going to hit a uh, test connection and you will be all good. Uh, hit OK. And uh, then uh, we should be able to go to the next step. Um, here it is asking you the folder location. The folder location is the container name. So I'm going to go and provide input. Um, if you remember that we have created the input container and in the input container we have uploaded the file. Um, so you see right there total sale.csv. So that's the information we need to provide them. Um, now we provided the container name and uh, here is a total sale.csv. And now it is asking you, okay, what is the file format? Uh, you can read different file uh, formats such as text, Avro, or ORC, and Parquet. In my case, it's a uh, text. Uh, and here you will provide uh, the column delimiter character. So it's going to be your uh, comma in my case, uh, but you can have uh, maybe uh, pipe sign or tilde or depends upon your file. Uh, so in my case, it's just going to be a comma. And the first row has the column name. Yes, my first row has column names. Uh, and then it is asking you, do you want to decompress and all that? Um, so if you want to decompress, uh, you can use uh, gzip, d flat, and uh, bzip2. Uh, In my case, I'm going to just leave this option as it is. Um, now I'm going to go to columns here, and it's going to read uh, all those uh, columns uh, from the file for me. I'm going to hit OK. As you know that uh, I need to write the data to the on-premises SQL server. So I'm going to use OLEDB destination here. And in this OLEDB destination, I will just connect my source to it uh, and double click. Uh, now I will create a new connection. Uh, so I'm going to delete old connection. Uh, and uh, actually, I don't need this one as well. I'm going to click new. Uh, and uh, here I will say new. And here I will provide my SQL uh, server name. That's my on-premises SQL. So I'm going to copy. And here I will provide my server name. Here I will provide my database name. It's TechBrowser IT database. So Test connection, looking everything good. And now I will select my connection. Here I will provide the table. And in the table, we know that it's total sale. Go to mappings. And it map correctly itself because all the column names are exactly matching from source to destination. We are going to hit OK here. I'm going to delete this connection because this is not the one I needed. So I'm just going to wait. You see it is saying test connectivity. It's going to fail. And then I'm going to delete. But there are some other things we need to take a look at because it's shown as the red cross here. So it means there is some problem with the data types. Let me delete this connection. And uh, now we have uh, all good. Here, if you hover your mouse, it is saying that column, uh, salesperson first name cannot be converted to Unicode and the non-Unicode. 
So it is reading uh, as is everything here as an worker and uh, that's where the problem is. Um, now I, what I need to do here, I need to convert that data type to the required destination data type. Uh, I'm going to delete this uh, here and I'm going to go and use, uh, I can use drive column or data conversion. Uh, I have decided to use data conversion here. So data conversion, I'm going to bring it here and then I'm going to connect my source with destination and then I'm going to uh, connect my data conversion output to my destination. Uh, still I didn't do anything so it is uh, still showing me error. So sale person first name, that's the problem. Now I will go click right there, sale person first name. Let me make it a little bigger. I can tell you all these columns, they're coming as on in worker. So I have to convert pretty much all of them, which are the data types. So, so uh, worker. So sale person first name, last name, and all that I have to change. Then I'm going to go for city, state, country, and region. So I have uh, just, I have to expand this. I'm going to leave this one names alias as different, or I can rename the same names. I'm going to leave it copy so I would know that. Here is a selecting n worker, so DTWSTR, but I need to make it a string. So I will say a string str, and the length is 100 is fine. That's what I have in my other uh, in the table. So I'm going to change everything here. Okay, now I'm going to go back here, hit OK, and then uh, now I'm going to open destination, go to mapping here, and I need to change mapping. I'm going to keep pressing C, and every time I do that, uh, it's going to bring the very first column matching with that. Um, so C, product name C, so C copy off because it started with copy off, right? So I'm going to go to C and C, and right here, C and C. So that's uh, how they are mapped quickly. Now I'm all good. You can see that there's no warning and there's no error anymore. Because uh, the data type uh, we are getting is n worker, we convert it to worker, and then we return to the our destination. That's exactly matching uh, with our uh, data type conversion uh, we did with the our data conversion transformation. Uh. We can go ahead and execute our SSIS package now. Right click on the SSIS package and say execute. Uh, as of now, you remember that there is no data in our total sale table. So I'm going to execute, and you see that. Uh, go back, let's take a look. Uh, the package is still in process of executing. Now it has a red 11 rows and uh, has written 11 rows. Uh, let's go to the table and select the data. You can see that the data came just fine. Uh, so we have ID, sale person, first name, last name, and all that. Um, looking good. Uh, so notice that uh, in this uh, scenario, we read the data from uh, uh, our blob storage uh, and uh, then we use a flexible file source. You could have done multiple things. Maybe you needed to use lookup or maybe find out, you know, maybe write the data to the maximum different destinations and all those kind of things. Uh, so you could have done all those, uh, but it was a simple demo. But the goal is uh, how you can read the data from Azure blob storage and write to your on-premises uh, destinations. Uh. Uh, what would be next step on this one? No? What you will do, you will take this package and then you can schedule this package from your uh, SQL Server agent. Uh, that's uh, one of the things you would like to do. Then you can run uh, every time you have the file available. You can go ahead and, uh, you know, on schedule you can run it or, uh, you know, find other ways whenever you want to run this uh, SSIS package. Uh. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, this video is helpful. Uh, I will put the code what I used in this uh, demo in the description so you can uh, perform the same demo.